Rad Nation. It's Brian from How Radiology Works. I'm gonna to talk to you today about iterative reconstruction. And in iterative reconstruction, we can learn how to gradually improve the image quality over time, and also how to reduce the noise in our CT images. Starting now, making an image is kind of like baking. And if you wanna bake molasses cookies, you might need some flour, definitely some molasses, brown sugar for sure. What do you need to make iterative reconstruction work? So we're gonna talk about the ingredients to make iterative reconstruction work, and then we're gonna put them together and see how it actually works. The first ingredient in iterative reconstruction is a forward model. So we need something that's gonna help us simulate how the x-rays pass through our body during an acquisition. If you haven't seen our video on the filtered back projection, Definitely check that one out after watching this video. For projection, you can think about a simple image matrix. Here I have just a three by three image matrix. Obviously, you know your matrix is usually much bigger than this, 512 by 512 or larger than that, typically. And the idea here is that if we have just these three values, we want to perform a forward projection and our detector is right here. So what a forward projection is in its simplest manner is just performing sums along some direction. And the direction is determined by the same direction that the x-rays travel through the body. So the simplest case that we like to think about is actually parallel projections. That's like the first generation CT. So if we were doing parallel projections through this simple matrix, we first go through the top row. If we go through the top row, we add up one and one and one is three. Middle row, we can see 0, 3, and 0 is also 3. And yet again, we get 3. In our system, it's going to be a little more complicated. Sometimes you're going to have to do more interpolation between these different values. Add up all the values along the ray paths. That's all that forward projection is. We've got our forward model. Then if we want to iterate, we need to keep going forward and back, forward and back. We need our inverse model or our back projection. Just like we talked about, the idea for back projection is to do the opposite that we were doing in forward projection. So in forward projection, we were adding up the values. We want to spread the values back along the direction they were acquired. I have a value of three. I'm just going to spread that value of three all the way along. Again, in parallel projection, just along these parallel rays. If I had the value of one here on my detector, I would spread the value of one all the way along. If I have a value of two on my detector, I will spread that value back all the way along in the matrix. If your detector is more of a modern detector rather than this first generation CT geometry, your rays may be going through from your detector to your source point, but the same idea where we're depositing the information all the way along the ray path from the detector to the source. And we need a denoising model. So the idea is that we would like to reduce the noise in our CT images, and we can do so by modeling this forward and back projection so that we know we're keeping our image true to the acquired data. And then at the same time, we can incorporate a denoising model. In fancy math terms, this is called regularization of the image. If you still have this simple matrix, imagine this is our simple matrix here, and we want some way to denoise it. I'll talk about just a couple simple denoisers first. Averaging, imagine we'd want to average the values here in our image and averaging, all we do for an averaging operation is just add them up and then divide by the values that are there. So we're looking now to find a value for the central pixel here and we were gonna use a three by three neighborhood. One and one and one is three, plus three is six, plus one and two is nine. Then we have nine, divided by nine. So the value that we would replace here would be just one. The average value of this little neighborhood is one. So you can see, because the value three was a little bit higher than all of the neighbors, it's gonna get squashed down a little bit. So if that value is noise, it's gonna get squashed down more closer to the mean of the neighboring pixel values. You can see here, this is my little bitmoji where the input has noise and then the output has been averaged. So you can see there's less noise, but you can also appreciate that some of the areas are a little bit smooth because the averaging operation, while it does reduce the noise, it doesn't do anything smart to try and 
figure out where the edges are gonna be in the image. For instance, if we'd like to preserve those. So the next operation I'll talk about a little more sophisticated is called the median operation. So instead of just adding them all up and dividing by how many there are, to take the values, we're gonna put them in order from lowest to highest. And then we're gonna take the one that's in the very middle or the median. So if we do that here, we take these nine values, we put them in order from lowest to highest, and then we look at the one in the middle, it's actually one. So in this case, the median for these values and the mean for these values is the same. So the properties of the median are, it is a little bit better at preserving the edges in the images, but it's still not perfect. You can see in my eyes, if you look in the eyes, close to the pupils, you can see we've lost a little bit of contrast because the values were relatively close to the background in the eye. So we've lost a little bit of contrast there. So while it's a step up from the mean operation, it's still not going to be the operation we're going to want to use within our iterative reconstruction. What we typically want to use in iterative reconstruction is actually an edge preserving, we call it a prior or prior knowledge about the fact that if there's a bone in the image, we expect there to be a relatively constant value within the bone and then relatively constant value within the soft tissue. And then we expect there to be some edges in the image. So you can see if you think about your CT as having household units, and if we plot those here, you could see when the values are relatively higher, they would be up here. And then the values are relatively lower, they would be down here. And then when there's an edge, there's gonna be a significant drop off here from the higher to the lower value. We'd like to preserve that kind of a drop off. But if there's relatively local noise that's either lower or higher, we'd like to kind of squash that noise while preserving this edge. So a number of forms have been developed over the years to have this type of behavior where you have edge preserving behavior. You can use when you're doing, instead of doing just a simple median operation or mean operation, you can look at the neighborhood and you can use values that take into account the difference between the pixel you're at and the neighboring values or the household units themselves. Additionally, there's been a number of kind of patch-based models where you look at different patches that are close by and you can use that kind of information to denoise within the image. We're not gonna go into full detail here about all those models, but the idea is that you have some edge preserving denoising. This is one of the first ones that was presented in the literature and used on CT scanners and the work by Thibault et al. And the idea here is you have a standard kernel and you have a bone kernel and you can see that there's less noise in the standard kernel. There is higher resolution in the bone kernel image and in this MBIR image, short for model-based iterative reconstruction, in the MBIR image, you can see the wire in the center is of high resolution. So it looks more like the bone wire than the standard wire. And you can see that the background noise values look more like the standard value or even less noisy than the standard value. So that's the idea of an edge preserving denoising function wherein you can preserve edges and the edges, for instance, of the uh, phantom here, this is an edge of the phantom. These type of edges can be relatively well preserved using these type of functions. Finally, you need a solver. So you need a method to put these pieces together. We're not gonna go through all the different solvers that are available. There's tons that we don't have time to mention, but the idea is that you want a method that lets you model that forward projection compare the data and then do a back projection. And then also you wanna incorporate that denoise. With iterative reconstruction, you can start with a uniform image or you can start with a filtered back projection image because that's a good guess and it's relatively fast to compute like in our filtered back projection video. So you have your input image, you're gonna take a forward projection through that and you might do this for one view, you might do this for one ray, or you might do this for all the views. It depends on the different algorithm you choose, the order and how many views you're gonna do at one time. But the idea here is you're gonna take a four projection and you're gonna get the, some data on your detector here. So the same geometry as your actual acquisition was taken. And you're gonna compare that to your measured data. So again, in this comparison, you might be doing a division operation or you might be doing a subtraction operation. It really depends upon the algorithm that you choose, 
But the idea is you want to compare and you'd like to get more and more similar to that measured data. That's your what we call data fidelity term. You don't want to have an image that's very far away from your measured data because you know that's not very true to the measurements. After you've done the comparison, we then have a projection which is in the projection space and we'd like to get that projection. It's either a subtraction or a division. We'd like to get that back into the image space. So we then do the back projection operation like we talked about. Again, we're following those rays from the detector back to the source. And at the same time that we did that back projection operation, we can talk about the denoising. So we take our volume here, we bring it down. This is just the same volume. And then we'd like to perform some denoising on it. Those edge preserving denoising operations. We have data which has less noise and we also have the contribution from back projecting our comparison data. And those things are both in the image space now and we'd like to weigh them and then do an update to our image. So this here depends upon, again, what kind of solver we chose and what's called the objective function, which determines how those two things are gonna get weighed against one another. After those two things are weighed against one another and we've updated our image, then you can say, are we done yet? Is this image close enough to being good yet? So there's a number of ways we can do that. We can either count how many iterations we did and just stop after a fixed number of iterations, or we can compare to the last iteration and say, are we getting pretty close? Because if we're making big changes, we wanna keep going. But if we're making only smaller changes now, let's stop. If we're not done, then the idea is we're gonna keep iterating and that's when we're gonna be in our iterative loop. The answer is yes, this image is close enough. Then we're done and we're gonna send that image so that the users can see it on the console. The idea and why it's called iterative reconstruction. So you can see the arrows going around because you're gonna be going around and around, going forward and backward between the image data and the projection data so that you can compare your image estimate to the measurements and keep on doing that such that we can make sure that our image is a good representation of the acquired data. To show you the same thing, we're gonna do it a little quicker this time, but now we're gonna look at just a 2D image. So this is my little Bitmoji. I started with a uniform image. I did one iteration and then I got to this just because the uniform image was a little dull to look at just being there. So the idea is let's pretend this is our input image. So you can see again, it's kind of blurry, but you can see somehow that there's a Bitmoji of Brian under there. I'm gonna do a forward projection. So we take the rays. This is a fan beam. Imagine we're in one plane. We take the rays that are traveling along the fan from the X-ray source to the detector. And then we're gonna get one measurement there. If we do that for multiple sources, we can fill up what we call our sinogram. This is our sinogram. So here you can see our sinogram for all the sources is filled up. And this is our forward projection of our image. So this is our current sinogram of our best guess at the image. You can compare that to the measured data. So this is the true data of the sinogram through my Bitmoji. We can do the comparison. After we do the comparison, again, depending on the type of algorithm, it's either gonna be a difference or a ratio. You take that comparison data. Now we have the projection data. We wanna get it back to the image data because we wanna update our image. So we'll take this comparison and we'll do a back projection. Project again along the direction of the rays from the detector to the focal spot in order to get the update suggested here by the projection data. I'm in the image space. We have the image and then we run a denoiser, which is gonna be edge preserved here. If you really zoom in, it's again, difficult to observe because this data is relatively early in the iteration. So it's kind of blurry anyway. But the idea here is that for going from here to here, we've performed a denoising operation. We're gonna take those data together. We're gonna weigh them. Again, depending on the type of solver we use, it might be doing just one ray. We might be doing all the rays in one view. We might be doing all the views at one time. But the idea at a high level is we're gonna make the update in the image space. We do the check like we talked about. If we've converged and we're done, we're gonna exit here. It's clear we haven't yet because this image doesn't look anywhere near my Bitmoji. But the idea is that if we 
haven't yet converged, we're gonna iterate like the directions of those moving arrows show until we get to a relatively stable image. Then we're gonna say we've converged and we're done. Here you can see the movie. Again, this is a maximum likelihood, expectation, maximization algorithm. But the idea is that you can see at the beginning, you have relatively high error. And then as you go through, your image is getting closer and closer to the expectation. And in this case, the low frequencies get filled first. So the edges don't look very good right when you start. Different algorithms have different properties depending on how the update's happening. Some of them will update the higher frequencies earlier and they will look better earlier. There's also additional tricks you can play, such as adding filtration to the projections, like within our filtered back projection, different art that's involved within the iterative reconstruction tuning. You can see here, this is just the error. I've plotted the error as a function of iterations. Again, just for this simple demonstration. So you can see this is after two iterations, after eight iterations, 32 iterations, that the error is still reducing actually just a little bit over time, but it might be a good point at which we could break the algorithm and say, this is good enough. And you can see here that over time, we've improved a lot from the initial very blurry image all the way to the image after 128 iterations. Again, the look and feel will be different depending on the algorithm that you use, but they all will have the same characteristic of starting with relatively high error and then reducing the error over time as the number of iterations increases. Check out our video on filter back projection if you haven't seen that one, because that's really the basis for understanding image reconstruction in CT.